Order the new Lo-Fi Penguin Desk Pad and Picky Penguin Notebook available over on Creator Inc. Check the link in the description below. Previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strike 9. Wonder what it tastes like. Mr. Norahoto, no! I'm sorry, it just looks so tasty. No! This is why I'm always so afraid for you! It's all going on right now inside of Susito's head. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Susito, are you okay? <laughs> Smacks it out of his hand. And now back to leg it, people. Hello! Sneako B. Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. We last left off, we completed case two and goddamn doodly. Goddamn doodly. It was a really good case, man. It was really a damn good case. And it was a case with continuity. Oh, what a what a fucking revelation. Seriously, it's it's I've just I've loved, 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 loved just seeing uh characters uh make a return from the the previous game and you know characters that were not really used at all miss green coming back and actually playing a huge role and being the culprit in this case uh god damn man it's so good there's so much about the last case that was written so well for example someone really point out just like just how insanely written some of this last case was and that was a winner is me uh, who last episode said uh, as we conclude this trial i just want to point out something interesting and kind of incredible especially from a writing standpoint when Shamsphere raises from the dead, he quoted Macbeth, out, out, brief candle, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player, the struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. If anyone is familiar with Macbeth, it's a tale of a man who was promised a place in the throne by the witches, the case to which being Selden, the throne being the riches. And so Macbeth went on a rampage, murdering everyone in his path to kingship until eventually someone else killed him. Sounds familiar, hmm? God damn! And then I looked at the replies and it gets even crazier. The king that he kills or goes to kill is named Duncan as well. What the fuck, dude? Damn, damn. So the fact that you, in in essence, I don't know if anyone actually managed to do that, but you could have sort of pieced together the entire like plot of this case in a lot of ways through this reference to Macbeth is pretty amazing. I really love shit like that. Like something that, it's such a minute, tiny detail that maybe like a handful of people ever fucking notice that you did it, but you do it anyway because it's cool. <laughs> it's just cool, right? It's such a really, it makes for deep diving into stories like this and actually trying to piece together the symbolism and other little details. It makes it so much fun when you have that shit in there. That is a pretty amazing attention to detail, I gotta say. So, uh, winners me, thank you so much for sharing that really, really interesting tidbit. Uh, and just for that reason, you are comment of the day. Oh, by the way, you guys also clarified, likely the reason why Shamespear didn't break into Suseki's room um, is because, well, one, it would have been super risky, and if he got caught, um, it would have... I mean, he would have gone to rest and gone to jail and dashed any of his hopes of getting the treasure. He wanted a surefire thing. And the other thing too, especially with Saseki specifically, um, Saseki like never left his room, right? He like barely ever left his room. So it really wouldn't have had a lot of time to search the room for the treasure. You think that motherfucker Seldon would have at least been a bit more specific about where that shit was. Just like, it's in my room somewhere. Good luck to you, mate. All right. <laughs> no, you asshole, get up. Get up, where is it specifically? <laughs> But whatever, it's all right. But we discovered, right, that that was some kind of like neck band uh, with a whole bunch of gems on it, but it had blood on it. So it seems like, I'll, I'll be curious to see. I mean, it seems like it, you could probably sell for a monetary value, but it also seemed like it might hold a uh, blackmail value as well. Like an important piece of evidence for something. And clearly Holmes knows what it is, which is why I didn't want us to talk about it. I also do see some of you guys also say you actually were a little, a little confused from this last case in terms of just trying to piece it together uh, on the fly. Uh, good, I'm glad it wasn't just me. I think the thing that really threw me for a loop was just the, like I didn't piece together right uh, before we went to the next trial, because a lot of times it's really easy to just be like, okay, clearly this guy's the bad guy. It's not really about like, who is it? It's about how do they do it? But in this case, it was like, we right from the get-go knew that Shamsphere likely was not a good guy, um, but we didn't really glean that, oh no, it wasn't like some accident or some shit that he set up himself. It, was, it really was someone trying to kill him and he had no idea who they were. 
So I didn't piece that together. And then when I realized that Miss Green was likely a culprit as well, I didn't really think to question her her testimony from before. I think I just took it so much of it at face value because she seemed so candid to us, you know, uh, earlier on. After we almost watched her fucking kill herself. So to, the fact that just it didn't even occur to me that she just said she was actually lying to us about what happened with the letter uh, really threw me for a loop. But I like that. I'm actually glad that it threw me for a loop because it makes for a lot more like surprises in these cases. It can be kind of boring if you're going to a case and you're like, all right, I know exactly what it is and what's going on. And you're like 10 steps ahead of, of every other character, which can happen a lot in these games. But it turns out that it was just a flying person all along. <laughs> and then I go, ah, fuck, no. Nah. But I was seeing a lot of you guys hype up apparently these next few cases. Uh, apparently these cases, this is where the game gets fucking crazy, <laughs> apparently. Where you're telling me it's not been crazy enough, which is, uh, oh, Oh, okay. I mean, we did discover a uh, very seemingly important piece of piece of evidence with that collar. Where I think this is gonna go, right? I still think my theory that the British government is like trying to cover some shit up, right? I think that's still what's going on here, which is, I mean, it's kind of what happened with Giselle Brett as well. But we still haven't got a clear definitive answer as to what they're trying to cover up and like, why did Giselle kill uh, Dr. Watson and so on. Why is this thing that needs to be on the hush hush? Well, maybe we'll start to come together here as we hop into uh, case number three. Let's go ahead and get started. Episode three, The Great Departed Soul. Damn, right off the bat. The grand end of the century, great exhibition of London. Surely there is not a soul who has failed to hear of it. Hmm, who's talking? Wondrous new works of culture and industry from every corner of the globe had converged on Hyde Park. Welcoming over 50 million visitors. The last great hurrah of this century. Astonished and delighted people of all nations and ended on a note of resounding success. But as regards to the terrible catastrophe that occurred during the festivities, very few were aware my friend Mr. Herlock Sholmes had a hand in unraveling the matter. For from the shadows, it was he who the Watson? unearthed the facts of the case. And like the centerpiece of the great exhibition, which rose high into the skies of Hyde Park, Jones's brilliant deductions, as clear and lofty as the Crystal Tower itself, brought the truth to light. Was it? I can't remember. I, th I think this is the same narr narrator that did the previous case as well, right? We're here at the showground of the Great Exhibition. So I think it's Watson. Isn't he fucking dead? Uh, oh, this is all voice acted. Okay. The weather is unusually fine, and we're about to witness a most extraordinary scientific experiment. This guy sounds like my, my generic new sounding guy. Quite a chip uh, dapper voice it is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century will see steam engines and electrical power dominate the world. Damn, check out this guy's fucking fro. Nice. Horse-drawn carts will give way to the motor car. Ships will sprout wings and take to the skies. <gasps> Praise the sun. And today we showcase even more advanced technology. A glimpse into the future. A world first, a demonstration <laughs> Got of, of the left. voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Doing his little royalty wave. Oh, hello, hello, audience. Oh, what in the fuck is that shit behind him, though? What in the fuck is that, your death ray? Be disassembled by a pulse of high voltage electricity and beams to another location. Oh, you about to fucking die today, dude. Oh, this is a bad idea. Okay. I definitely don't think this ever. <laughs> Shit. I wonder what's gonna go wrong with this. Whereupon his body will be reassembled by a series of complex calculations exactly as it was before. Oh, God. Yeah. Not it. I'm not volunteer for this shit. Oh, this poor man. How much do they have to pay you for this, sir? Not much. I'm, I'm already obscenely wealthy. I'm just incredibly bored. I've got nothing going on in my life. Look at that goofy run. But a few moments from now, 
This gentleman will, in the blink of an eye, complete an incredible journey through the air. <laughs> I swear to God, he's not going to explode. <laughs> oh, jeez. arrive an instant later on the crystal tower behind you. He's just, he's literally just going to go splat right into that shit. Fucking giblets of rain now. Oh, my God. Oh, that's why this game has an M rating. He <laughs> smacks the levers. Oh, well, nice on you, old chap. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Things are going wrong. Who would have thought? Boom. Watching this show, like, or actually, no, I guess we wouldn't be watching this on the, on the telly. A little too early for that. We'd be, we'd be listening to this on the radio, probably. Be like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, it seems everyone exploded and died that day. As the blood rains down on the audience, everyone's in shock and awe at the gnarly explosion we just bore witness to. I'm Dandy Doolittle here with y'all. Daily depressing news. See you all in another hour. Uh, October twenty second, nine thirty six a.m. Holmes the Sweet. Now, I imagine we're back to the future again, right? We just recall that last case, and now we're back to me hanging out with Iris here. Dude, are you listening? Oh, sorry. Um, what was that, Iris? Hmm, what's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. Didn't you like what I cooked for breakfast? No, no, that's not it at all. Um, what were we talking about again? Today's paper, it's full of news about the great exhibition again. Ah, yes. The Great Exhibition. I'd like to go sometime. <laughs> You're really not your usual self today. You seem very down. Did all those mind fucks from the last case screw you mess with your brain? Which last case? You mean last case is in last case or last case is in the last case of the previous game, which was the last case for me? <laughs> okay, I think I'm starting to see why your brain's all messed up. Don't you agree, Holmesy? Oh, Holmesy, sad. Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Oh, gosh, you're even more down. <laughs> I already go through these spouts of depression. <laughs> but you arrive, Mr. Narhodo. I want to do battles with you. Come on, come on, come at me. I've been here for about half an hour already. We had breakfast together. What? Why didn't you mention it before? I um thought you might have known I was here. You know, because breakfast? Hmm. Iris is quite right. You're clearly lacking in vim. So much that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the reason perfectly well with some simple observations. What? I mean, I told you all about it, so let's see. Yes, for example, your tussled hair this morning with all its uh, unruly spikes. Clearly, it can be deduced, therefore, that... Um, let me stop you there, Mr. Holmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this every day, and this is the fucking 27th time we've had this conversation! It always has, ever since we first met, in fact. Oh, really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks again. A fucking conversation. I'm I'm convinced they've literally had this conversation every day since he's been here. It crossed my mind recently. That's been six months now. Six months? Since I was forbidden from working in court. I'm so bored. So I've been wondering how much longer I'm going to be banned. Oh, well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Well, you want to go back and reminisce about more cases? No, I want new cases, dang it. Ah, uh, what about that third case where Seki got arrested again? No, I'm so sick of Seki and his weird mannerisms and his dabbing. No, I want to do some thing. Let's go to that great exhibition. I bet some shit happened there. Don't you agree, Holmesy? I'm back to being sad again. Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Ah, back to moping. Oh, they ran out of tea at my favorite tea shop. I'm sad now. <laughs> What's the matter with Mr. Holmes today? He seems even more down the dumps than me. I know, and the great exhibition is a 
opened. You think he'd be excited? Oh, why don't we all go see it together? I want to, of course I do. But I can't. Not for the time being. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective after all. So you're embroiled in some tricky case that you can't be distracted from? Is that it? I think to myself. I don't remember hearing that you're working on a case, Holmesy. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. But first, I gotta do my usual thing of, hey, check this out. Oh, um, Mr. Holmes, about this. Shh, not another word. Ah, yes, I see. This would be a collar for a breed of miniature canine with a particularly long neck and for winter use. Actually, it's the armband I always wear that symbolizes my role as a defense lawyer for my dead best friend. Oh, that was my second guess, damn. Precisely, which leads us to but one conclusion. Your arm is in fact, the peculiarly long neck of a miniature canine. I'm starting to wish I'd never shown this to him now. This man's barking mad. Did we have the same, is this the exact same thing he said to me last time? I think it might've been. All right, we got any new shit in here? Let's talk about this chest again. I think that's the same. I do love a good fire in the colder months. Watching the flames fl flickering and dancing about. It's just so relax, very relaxing. Cleaning out the chimney isn't so relaxing though. Okay, this is different. No, getting covered in soot isn't my idea of fun. You know, Holmesy decided he was going to clean out him, clean it out himself last year. But you can guess what happened, can't you? He got himself stuck inside the flu. He's a very slim man, I admit. But there are limits to where a fully grown man can fit. Now every time he dozes off by the fire, he has nightmares about it. <laughs> this is why I'm so claustrophobic, Iris. I know, Holmesy, I know. Ah, all these different pieces of evidence from cases that Mr. Holmes has solved are very interesting. The trouble is, Holmesy forgets things so quickly, he never remembers why these things are relevant. The other day, for example, he saw the orange pips that were there and decided to plant them in the ground. Pips? Yes, they've all sprouted now. We have five new little plants. Oh, well, I don't know what that case they were from, but... If Mr. Holmes can get oranges to grow out outside in England, he should change his profession. Goal. That's actually pretty impressive. You're gonna talk about this? Oh God, am I trying to pronounce this thing again? Ah, uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Holmes' faithful musical companion. Was this violin made by somebody famous? Yes, it's a Stradivarius. Say with me, Stradivarius. I'm afraid you have to save up for a hundred years before you can afford one, Bruno. If I were to save up for a hundred years, I wouldn't choose to buy a violin per se. <laughs> oh, what would you buy then? I really have no idea. I'll have to do it so I can find out. <laughs> I don't know, that's a good question. Something really cool though. Every time I look at that machine, I can't help thinking what a monstrosity it is. What's it called again? The Great Analytoscope. It can analyze absolutely anything you know. It does seem incredible. And at the same time, incredibly useless. I, I swear to God, the file case of this game, the, the, the most vital piece of evidence, right, is going to be fucking understood and dissected all because of the fucking analytoscope. That's just going to come into play super clutch. I'm calling it. Oh, but it looks impressive, doesn't it? So that makes it very useful. How does that make it useful? Because it means you can pawn it for lots of money. The palm records always make our remarks like, what an incredible looking machine. Ha. <sighs> So Holmesy often takes it to the pawn shops when he's a little short. That thing's huge, by the way. You just carry that thing around? Sounds like this thing pulls its weight around here more than I realize by having its weight pulled around. Wah, wah. Uh. Oh, we're looking at the gun holes or the paper. This, okay, we definitely, we definitely read that one. I think a lot of these are ones that we've actually seen before. It seems like the check marks may not carry over. I, I, it's like, it's, I'm pretty sure the chimney one was new. I should read the board here. Ah, uh, yes, this is where you noted down ideas, isn't it, Iris? What's in the melting pot today? Hmm, the blue carbuncle? Oh, wait, this is the one we already read, isn't it? That, these all seem the same. So let's just go ahead and talk to Holmes. Event six months ago. Tell me what happened. Half a year ago now. Many years ago. I took on the defense of a young girl in a trial. Heard at the Old Bailey. Oh, fuck, that's right. Gina. Where the hell's Gina at now? 
or is she is she even named Gina anymore? I think she's she was also a Conan Doyle character, I believe, right? What at first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at London Pawnbrokery turned out to be one part of a much more far-reaching plot that involved the British government. During the course of the trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable yet at the same time unforgivable mistake. Words fail me. The situation is utterly deplorable. I'm glad we're flashing back. That, that's good. Mr. Narihodo. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. And it turns out they actually meant something. <laughs> that there was actual consequences. In the end, to have my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and study. So that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Bruno? Reading all those big, fat, fat tomes about British law up in your room and the notes about Holmesy's old cases. Brewing Iris' special blends of tea, fetching my daily bread for me. You become something of a manservant around here. Start in the Civil War next, Master Narahodo. Man, screw you guys. I'm not helping you do dishes anymore. Well, I'm thinking of going to ask the powers that be to reconsider. Specifically, Lord Strongheart. Okay. I think you guys brought this up. So, it was originally, uh, his name was like Heart Vortex or something. His name is now like Magnus Strongheart. <laughs> Damn, what? Still a manly as fuck name. Specifically, Lord Strongheart at the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart? Ah, the delightful old Lord Chief Justice. Not my favorite fellow. You know what L L uh, Strongheart reminds me of? He reminds me of, um, uh, the guy from, uh, I think he was the final, like, DLC case of the first game, I think. I think his name starts with a G. I can't remember, man. It's been too long. But he had, like, the pink sunglasses. Kind of the same, like, like powerful guy, right? With a uh, bit of a disturbing energy to him. He's not mine either, but he's the man I have to talk to. He's the only one who can grant permission for me to start working in the courts again. I came to Britain to become the best lawyer I could. And I can't do that just sitting around here. The whole of London has been swept up in this great exhibition, hasn't it? The most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things and the world will be watching. Oh, do you, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look down London for one of those lovely balloons. Oh, that's a cute an little animation. I don't know if we... Did she have that, that animation in the previous game? I don't know if I've seen it before. If, if, if she did, she did, I don't think she used it super often. Look down on... Do you mean those things fly? Yes, of course! They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it. All you need is hot air. But how? How does hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense! I can't understand it at all. That's true of a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. But in a hundred years time, all these things would be just common knowledge. I suppose they might be. My great, 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 great grandson. We'll probably have some fucking dent cases involving these flying mechanisms and flying people. Mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong in the open experimentation stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. And his body went all to pieces. It was beautiful. <laughs> Still, I wish I'd seen it, though. I'd love to see how bad some of these scam experiments really are. <laughs> Says the innocent 10 year old girl. I just want to see him die in a bloody mess. See here, every page of this paper carries some article or other about the great exhibition. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. Uh, great exhibition newspaper. A newspaper containing various articles about the worldling science and technology on show at the great exhibition being held in London. Shouts cast behind? Is that a more metaphorical way of referring to the back page of the back page of the paper? Look. Uh, eyes of the world are on the Crystal Tower. Every article on the front page is news about the great exhibition. Public experiments to demonstrate brand new scientific ideas, cultural ex exhibits from around the world. It's also positive and hopeful about the coming century. We must all go see to see it properly for too long. 
All right. What we got going back? Oh, shit. We got some... What the fuck? What? The Reaper attacked. Huh? Ruffians aim to intimidate a man of justice. Lord Van Zeeks and compatriot cornered? Huh? So many glowing reports about the Grand Exhibition and everything that's going on there. No! Narho, look at the big picture there! Other than this rather gloomy looking one, that is. Wait, what? What's the matter, Bruno? The Reaper attacked. That's, that's Lord Van Zeeks. This must be what Mr. Holmes was talking about. Does he know any more, I wonder? What? I'm a little confused by this picture here. It seems like somebody's coming to rough up Van Zeeks and then it's like Van Zeeks and Capitan are cornered. Oh, by a number of ruffians? Oh, so this is this is his pal, I guess. I get it. <gasps> Lost Kitty! It's not talking about uh, Wagahai, is it? I think he just went back. I think he went back to Japan. It's all good. Ooh. Uh, first, let's hear about your gloomy mood. Are you investigating a particularly tricky case at the moment, Mr. Holmes? Hmm, you could say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of case is it? Shh, quiet, Mr. Arhodo. We must not discuss it here. You never know who might be listening. You're acting very strangely, Holmesy. What do you mean, Iris? Well, usually, the more mysterious and complicated the case is, the better Holmesy's mood. Ah. Is it really a case that's bothering you? Iris, please. You mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation and deduction on me without invitation. Remember what I always say. Put yourself in the shoes of the individual about whom you're making deductions. You say you say that, do you? You, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> Never mind. I must have had a cup of tea. I must make my way at once to the crime scene. <sighs> that was a deep sigh. Hmm. The Reaper attacked. Is this in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked? That's terrible. You know the legend of the Reaper of the Bailey, of course, don't you? Only too well, in fact. Yes, Prosecutor Barack Van Zeeks. Oh God, here we go again. Hello. They say if the Reaper is the prosecutor in a case, there's no salvation for whoever's in the dock. Even if the defendant is found not guilty. Once the Reaper has someone in his sights, one way or another, that person's time left on this earth will be short gonna die. London's finest rogues always find ways around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal at trial. Falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hand of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at work. Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among the fraternity is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this does occur. Really, the capitalists are never in supply of such scoundrels. Hmm. So, do you mean Lord Van Zix has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time? He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know. <laughs> wow, really? He just kicks the shit out of them. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Kicks them so hard in the dick, their fucking testicles come out their mouth. Blah. He doesn't take these attacks lying down. Although, it seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. Thank God he can dodge bullets. Oh my goodness, is, is he all right then? Is Lord Van Zeeks hurt? My dear fellow, how on earth would I know? Well, in the article here it says, as to one of Lord Van Zeeks and his condition, all will be revealed in tomorrow morning's edition. Oh, that's a fuck you. Fuck you, fucking newspaper. That's trying to get more of my money. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, no, no. I can't wait until tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to inquire with somebody in the know. But who? Or Strongheart, perhaps? Huh? Oh, but he scares me. All right, well, quickly throw my clothes on. Well, I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Holmes. Ha, you really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seem to put me off guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you will be wasting your time. 
The thought hadn't crossed my mind. I'm now wondering where you're going. <laughs> well then, see you later indeed. Bye. Listen to him. He's still laughing on his way out of the door. <gasps> oh my God, look at your funny little buttons on your head. <laughs> oh my God, look at the funny outfit. Oh my God, she's so cute. Look at you. Look at you. She looks like she got a Mickey Mouse hat on. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is the first time I've ever seen uh, Iris's going out outfit or going out coat. It's like, it's like coat like Holmesy's, right? Except hers is purple and it's got little buns on the top for her two twin tails. All right then, Riddle, let's get going. Oh, um, Iris, what are you wearing? <laughs> Change to go to the great exhibi exhib exhibition. You're going to take me. <laughs> this is going to be our little excursion. We're going on an adventure, Rudo. What? But but I was about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, that sounds fun too. You're going to take me there then. <laughs> go, do it. Bye, Rudo. Oh, God. All right, fine. Just lower that weapon, would you? You're going to do it. You're going to do it, Rudo. Of course. And after the Supreme Court, then we're going to see the great exhibition. <laughs> I love Iris, man. She's so funny. All right. I guess we're good then. Is it all outfit on now? It, it is. It actually remembers it. I can talk with my eyes shut, you know. Yeah. Nah, these are all the same. <laughs> funny. Uh, Can I go to the new location's been added? Let me go up here real quick. Hey, look at my lovely abode. So Iris is going to be my Suzuto, huh? Suzuto still hasn't returned from uh, Japan. October 22nd, now we're legal consultancy. What to do? I'm so excited about the prospect of Naruhoto's anything consultancy opening for business again. That's not what it's called. It's Naruhoto's legal consultancy. I've done a lot of studying in these past six months. Reading law texts and judicial priest precedents. I'm sure I'm a better lawyer now. I can't wait to start practicing again. The weights are coming off, baby. Nothing's changing here at all, though, has it? This is no time it's stood still in here since Susie went back to Japan. She's not here to clean up after me. I want to keep it right for Miss Susito. Because she was able to return to Britain at any point. So I've just left everything the way it was. Aw. Oh, I see. Right. And that was me thinking it was because of the way you are, Runo. You know, never bothering to tidy up, I mean. Iris. This isn't the time or the place to bring up my tidiness. Or lack of it. You said a bit of you. Uh... Do we have fish in here? We don't. We should put fish in there. Wait, let's look at the thing. The office spade. Now Miss susu has gone. The shovelers aren't represented, represented to correct me. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to do it myself. That's not that's not a spade, Mr. Naruhoto. It's a shovel. Ah, so you're a spade, are you, Bruno? What? You want to battle it out? <laughs> you want to do battle, bitch? All right, I'm not going to argue with a native English speaker who has some kind of guts. Huh? You want to do it? You want to throw down, Rudo? No, I really don't. T. The kettle's gently simmering away there on top of the stove as usual. It was kind of Misusa to send that Japanese tea. You really like it, don't you, Iris? But for me, it's the sound of the stove and the burbling kettle I like the most on biting winter mornings. And it feels even cozier in here when the delightful Iris pours the tea for me. I really couldn't manage without that wonderful young girl. <laughs> oh, Bruno, it's so sweet of you to say so. Stop putting words in my mouth, please, Iris. Well, you're right. I am. Now, first glance, my desk here might look as though it's in a mess. However, it's not a mess at all. Everything is exactly where I want it to be. And oh god, my papers are on fire! But whenever Miss Suso looked at it, she put her hands on her hips and say, Oh dear. Her way of saying it, I should make it more orderly and neat, uh, and neat mess. I miss that. Aw. You sound just like Holmesy, you know. He says the same about his mess. It's the kind of logic that transcends, transcends international borders, obviously. Aw, that's so cute. They love each other. Miss Suso so damn demon much. Miss Suso's tea set that she left here with me. I still think green tea is just too bitter, though. Thank goodness for sugar and milk, because I'm a big old weenie. Mr. Holmes certainly wasn't expecting the acrid taste at one time. I've never heard anyone let out a scream like that before. 
I've never seen anyone fall down the stairs quite like that either. <laughs> it always brings a smile on my lips when I'm feeling a little down. <laughs> I'm actually Holmes fall down there. Oh, go on, damn you, Mr. Arholder. Oh, well, do you know what that reminds me of? The day I gave you some black coffee when you weren't expecting it. You fell all the way down the stairs as well, didn't you, Bruno? Yes. Do you think we could try to forget that, please, Iris? It doesn't bring a smile to my lips at all. <laughs> uh, oh, right. We got to talk about this. Ah, uh, yes. The Daruma doll I brought with me from Japan. I always tend to color in the other eye once I become a fully-fledged lawyer. Which will hopefully happen at the end of this game. But still winking at me like it's trying to say, I can wait. Take as long as you need. Or maybe not. I'll just have to keep on doing the best I can, I suppose. I can color it in for you, Bruno. That's just one eye, is it? No, no, it needs to be done with a bit of a ceremony, Iris. It's not just a toy for coloring in, you know. Oh, but I like coloring things, Rudo. I know, I know. Uh, let's go in Susie's room. I never did see what Miss Susie's room looks like. I can go in now, of course, but I don't dare. She would know. They say a young man's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets. And by they, I mean Susito. Although from the laughter I used to hear when you would visit, I imagine it's mainly sweet. Oh, we used to have such fun in Susie's room. She told me all sorts of interesting things about your country, you know. Oh. Uh, can I examine the plant? No? Look at the prawns and the anemones gently swing around the tank. Oh, wait, no, it is filled up. Regular cleaning, some food and fresh seawater is all they need. And some conversation, of course. It seemed like a lot of effort at first. But it was worth it. I'm starting to be able to tell what they're thinking. Funny thing that so many people in London had aquariums like this once when they were in vogue. You never expect to find sea anemones in the middle of the capital. I think I'll have to name them soon. Oh no, Rudos disappeared! What? Ah, I expect he's been eating been eaten by Holmesy. I think I'd prefer it if you used your imagination more when naming the sea life. Oh god! Why did you tell me that? Not Bruno. It's Miss Susto's desk. I suppose it won't get used now that she's gone back to Japan. I'll just have to wait here patiently for his old friend to return. Even now, I sometimes find myself pouring a cup of tea for Susie by mistake. Ah, uh, that explains why I sometimes find a steaming cup on the, her desk here. It shocks me every time. But it's just one of your pranks, I see. It's no prank! I miss her, dang it! <laughs> I love her and so do you! You're right. Uh, okay, I think that's everything. Except for understanding why there's a giant clove of garlic over here. Or onions or something. Okie dokie. All right, let's go see uh, this guy. Hold on, wait, I'm gonna have to, I have to actually have to refresh myself I did this guy's voice. I don't remember, I didn't voice him very much because he's only showed up like twice. I think it was just a gravelly British voice. Yeah, pretty much, all right. Lord Chief Justice's office. Oh, it's actually, that's right. It's actually inside the clock tower. Burps! October 22nd, British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Oh, boy. It's been about six months now since I was last here. But some things never change, like the sense of foreboding I always seem to feel in this place. Ha <laughs> ha! Doesn't seem to be bothering Iris at all, though. She's happily reading over there. I feel like somebody could do a, a really good, like, Iris VTuber avatar. <laughs> you know? It's like, ever all her funny expressions. She's so cute. She'd be, su she'd be super successful, I think. Oh, I love this place. I always find so many interesting books here. Of course. I was for forgetting that you've been here before. The time we came here six months ago. When Susito san was given the news that she was to return to Japan. Uh... Oh boy, all right. Ah, I understand you wish to speak with me. Ah, uh, Lord Strongheart, I trust you've been keeping well. Oh, that's right, he always checked his, he always checked his watch and he had like everything, everything that he like had time for, he had planned down to like the second. Let's see, you, since you've arrived and requested an audience, it's been four hours, 32 minutes and 26 seconds. I've kept you waiting a while. My apologies. No, oh, no, not at all. I like nothing more than sitting around staring into space. Good to know. Good to know that doesn't appear to bother him at all. Male Strongheart. Oh, no, no, no. Male 
strong heart even better male strong heart god the manliest name ever no magnus was the name of uh mcgundle it was and i think it's not even mcgundle i think it's like mcgruber or something like that magnus mcgruber mcgruber uh male got the name dude male strong heart lord chief justice of london he's the man who allowed me to start practicing as a defense lawyer when i arrived in britain as a student you need only savor the air for a moment in this grand office to understand his preeminent status. As you will be aware, the Great Exhibition of London is now underway at last. We're extremely busy as a result, policing the grounds, guarding the new technologies, dealing with petty crime. And furthermore, as of next month, we shall open the International Forensic Science Symposium. Oh, uh, I've not heard about that. Investigating authorities from 40 countries around the globe will take part, be taking part, including from your own land. Oh. Forensic science is the future. The world must embrace it. As we're the hosting nation, I have much to do. And it is my highest priority. If others must wait for my attention as a result, so be it. Well, it's nice to know where I stand. <laughs> so, you wish to consult with me? Of course, I can very well imagine what this is about. Uh, well, um, thank you for agreeing to this meeting, my lord. I want to be allowed to start working as a defense lawyer again in court. That's what brought me here today. But actually, there's something else playing on my mind as it happens. Hmm. Bruno, just take a deep breath and come out with it. I'll shoot you. Ah, fine. Let's have a look at your stuff, though, real quick the Lord Chief Justice's desk. When you look at that, there's no mistaking Lord Strongheart's authority, is there? But the light from that window behind is far too bright. It would be very bad for the eyes. I hadn't thought of that. There are no curtains, that's for sure. What's more important, having a desk with an air of authority or having eyes at work? I can't say I'd ever considered it. After all, my little office barely has any light to speak of. I haven't really seen my desk in a while. Look at this cool guy. Oh, I've just had a great idea. What is it? We could hide inside these suits of armor and spy on the fob watch master to find out what he's really like. <laughs> I don't have much interest in that Lord and what Lord Strongheart is really like though. And he's right there staring at me and listening to what we're saying. Oh, please, it would be fun. You could be inside the left one and I'll go in the right. You really want to have a go in a suit of armor, don't you? <laughs> huh, now you're making fun of me because I'm a child, aren't you? I wasn't making fun of you at all. I'd like to have a go too. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. The cogs of the great of the giant clock are keeping time as usual with their steady ryth rhythmical motion, which makes sense. Well, which is perfect for for Strongheart, right? It's really quite disturbing how little sound they make, considering their massive size. So very brilliant must have designed it. Whoever maintains it must be very talented too. But I'm not entirely convinced it's even a clock. What? But what about the huge clock face that forms the window over there? Some people just make machines that move for, for the fun of it because they enjoy watching them. I don't like how Holmesy makes, makes his rambling deductions just for the fun of it. Even if the outcome isn't quite right. Never mind all the trouble it gets others into along the way. Cool. Uh, oh, actually, look at the candlestick. Couldn't read all these. Oh, no, the books. Couldn't read all these books even if you were reincarnated three times over as a bookworm. Oh, I know. So much reading material. I'm very envious. I've really been re running out of things to read recently. That's because you read so fast. Perhaps little by little I could swap some of the books here with some of my mine from home. I don't see why not. No one noticed. At least I wouldn't. If I was reincarnated three times over as a librarian. Think over this side? No. What about the other side? No. Black gives me the option, though. Okay, I think that's it. Permission to work, sir. I actually came here today to ask you for your permission. Go on. Six months ago, my right to work in court as a lawyer was revoked, and I was told to spend my time studying. Obviously, I'm very sorry for what happened, but the thing is, it made me understand what it really means to defend somebody under the rules of a foreign justice system. And I desperately want to have another go. Please, permit me to enter the courtroom again. Mr. Narahudu. Yes. Oh, here it comes. 
I'm sure you haven't forgotten your position here, have you? At best, you are a substitute for your compatriot. This was never your intended role. Well, that's true. The Japanese government actually set my best friend on this study tour, not me. It should have been Kazuma. He was so determined to bring change to our own justice system at home. That was his calling. Uh, I'm okay. I am fine. If that tragic accident hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here in this office now. Mr. Soki was my best friend, you see. That's why I can't leave it unfinished. I have to fulfill his calling for him. Hmm. His calling, you say? Has it never occurred to you? That perhaps you know nothing of his true calling? Sorry? The mission with which that young law student was charged. What do you suppose it really was? Wh what do you mean? Mission? He's not making any sense. Never mind. I've read all the reports you've submitted over the past six months. It's clear to me that you're, you regret your actions and have been studiously obeying your revised instructions. D do you mean... As of this moment, I reinstate your license to practice law here in Great Britain. Wow. Cool. Thanks, bro. Thought you'd be a real dickhead about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful news, Rono. In fact, I believe I have the perfect case to mark your comeback. A curious affair. You'll consider it, I hope. Uh, of course. Please tell me more. Uh, first, let's hear about the Forensic Science Symposium. All sorts of conferences have been taking place around the world to coincide with the Great Exhibition. And next month, the largest and most important of them will all will take place at last. The International Forensic Science Symposium. It does seem as though criminal investigation needs to embrace scientific methods, doesn't it? Exactly. Ah! London, the global epicenter of culture, science, and wealth. Now has a population exceeding six million. And sadly, crime in the capital is growing at a similarly startling rate. So it's imperative that we use the latest scientific methods to investigate and resolve cases as efficiently as possible. Which is what's known as forensic science, isn't it? Exactly! The future of policing! Ah! <laughs> You're scaring Iris! Your booming voice! Regrettably, however, Britain is currently dragging its feet when it comes to the adoption of forensic methods. Oh dear, that's alarming. Exactly, it's extremely, extremely alarming. Ah! If I were Her Majesty's Attorney General, you can be sure the numbers of crimes committed and resolved in London would be very different to the current figures. And I can cite 12 solid arguments and 223 individual reasons to support my claim. Sorry? By way of apology for keeping you waiting earlier, I shall detail everyone now. What? Oh, how fascinating. Oh boy, we're gonna be here a while. It all began 15 years ago, which I was blah, 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 blah. Naruto died that day. As he saw the light, he saw Susie's face one last time before disappearing into oblivion. Blah 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 And that more or less sums up my feelings on the matter. In the simplest of terms, of course. God, amazing, I saved us eight hours in that whole conversation. Normally it would have been thirty hours. Essentially to formally establish a forensic investigation division with within Scotland Yard. That is my mission. Oh, um, right. Yes, that's Wonderful. Exactly. Wonderful is precisely what it will be. <laughs> Iris isn't paying any attention at all. She's got her nose in another book now. Oh boy. Better not ask him that question again. Oh, is it over? Did you learn anything useful? Actually drifted off for the most part. Surprisingly ardent about forensic science. I hope he didn't hear that last part. A curious affair. You described it as a curious affair. Yes, that's right. I believe it was reported in the press. 
Are you aware that there was a serious accident at the Great Exhibition yesterday? Oh, no. Yes, I read about it. A professor from Germany tried to carry out a crazy experiment. Let me see. How was it described? Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, I think? Instantaneous kinesis? Is it moving things with a click of the fingers? That's right. It's just where my elbow blends deed. A dash of devil may care. Whatever this serious accident was exactly, it's clearly captured Iris' imagination. It's an unfortunate business. A large explosion engulfed the public experimentation stage, and a man lost his life. A certain Mr. Odie Asman, an investor and a well-known figure in society. Odie Asman. Odie Asman. De Asman? De Asman? Oh, die as man. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. It doesn't seem right, though. Oh, die. Why have the O before it? Oh, die as man. A large explosion? Uh, a man died? The man responsible for the experiment was Professor Albert Hairbrain. <laughs> Hairbrain. Oh, okay, that was that was pretty obvious. Albert Hairbrain. Very unfortunate name. He was detained immediately after the incident and is due to appear in court tomorrow. On the charge of murder. What? Murder? He just sounds like an idiot. <laughs> he sounds like a hairbrain. If you intend to take on his defense, you should hurry to meet with him at the prison. Seems like this. He seems like he really likes setting me on impossible cases, right? It was like the same with McGundle, where he's like, "Well, clearly he's like guilty, and this shit, you know, you're you're gonna fail here." I, at least, I, seemingly. And it seems like it's the same with this one, where it's should be a pretty close and shut case. There's very little time left for you to carry out any kind of investigation. The Great Exhibition, a scientific experiment gone wrong, and murder. I feel out of my depth before I've even started. Still. We should go to the prison straight away then and try to meet with this court German professor. Don't you think? Definitely. Oh yes, one more thing about the case. There's a connection with our mutual acquaintance, the Reaper. Oh, with Lord Van Zeeks? How? What? No new thing? Oh, about to show him that, but let's show him this first. By the way, Lord Strongheart, about this. The symbol of a defense lawyer in the Jap Japanese judiciary. Oh, I, I didn't expect you to know that. <laughs> Usually everyone just says it's a weird fashion statement. We never accept foreign students for researching the legal systems of their home countries. But such trinkets are merely for show. The only true measure of your worth is your performance in court. Yes, right. Oh, that reminds me, have you seen this? Reports of the overwhelming success of the Great Exhibition, of course. No, no, not that. The story on the back page. What story? The Reaper attacked. Ah, that. You've enjoyed some victories in court against my number one prosecutor, have you not? Poor Mr. Reaper. What happened to him? He, he wasn't killed, was he? He better not be. There's no need for concern. Lord Van Zix would not be so easily dispatched, I assure you. Can you tell us what happened? I'd really love to know. Very well. If it interests you. It does, strangely. Van Zix's condition. Fortunately, Lord Van Zix emerged from the attack unscathed. Street ruffians are no match for that man. He's a very capable fighter. But, but that's incredible! They were armed with guns. Why was he attacked though? Do we know? It's related to events that occurred a month ago. A leader of one of the capital's criminal organizations was indicted and prosecuted by Van Zietz. But the man was acquitted. I've no doubt large sums of money were involved behind the scenes. Large sums of money? A deplorable situation. Members of the jury were bribed it seems. However, despite winning his freedom, the man in question met a dramatic end yesterday. But, but you're not suggesting that was the work of the Reaper, surely? The victim's henchman certainly seemed to think so. He was a man by the name of Asman, Mr. Odie Asman. What? Oh, wow. So the guy that died, it was the guy that got off in the previous case, huh? 
And what was his... What, was, what did they say about him? A leader of one of the crim, capital's criminal organizations was indicted and prosecuted. What in the hell then convinced him to participate in this fucking experiment? Did, did you say Asmin? That's the man who died in the big explosion of the Great Exhibition! I know, I'm the one who told you about that. Yes, no publicly as an investor, but in reality, the head of a significant criminal organization. Unbelievable. I wonder, can I ask you something, Lord Strongheart? Try me. Why do you use Lord Van Zix as a prosecutor? All the criminals who managed to get off in court and meet with the mysterious ends outside the courtroom. And fearful of that fate, they seek to strike at Lord Van Zix first. I know there's no evidence that he actually is the Reaper in that sense, but still, something clearly is going on here. I have Van Zeek's work for the prosecution service for two reasons. Firstly, the man is the best prosecutor in the capital, bar none. And secondly, any deaths of criminals that have occurred outside the courtroom following his trials are nothing to do with him. But that doesn't make sense. How can you explain the way so many have died if not by someone's hand? Van Zix may have earned himself the moniker of the Reaper, but he is no killer. So he will continue to prosecute on behalf of the Crown. Is this something the British government themselves maybe is doing? Like they're basically playing on this Reaper curse by making it seem that way? Unless he wishes otherwise, of course. Hmm. Well, I must be leaving for my next engagement. I'm already 11 hours and 16 minutes late. My colleagues may be starting to fidget. <laughs> 11 hours late? That's quite something. That meeting had already started when I arrived back here for this engagement with you. So lateness was inevitable. Time stops for no man. Sure, it stopped for me during those 12 solid arguments and 223 reasons. <laughs> oh, yes. Where would I find Lord Van Zeeks now? I would assume he's at his office. Right. I'll go and ask uh, him about the attack in person. I want to get this straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, shit. Am I going to talk? I'm going to talk to Van Zeeks. See what he looks like when he talks to me facing forward. I'll be a first. And I can see where he worked. Away with you now. I'm leaving Professor Harebrain's defense entirely in your hands. Uh, of course, yes. Thank you very much, my lord. Farewell. And he vanished into the night. New location has been added. Okay, so we go to the prison, but I want to... Fuck you, I'm going to go see Van Zeeks. Damn! Check out this fucking pad! Oh, damn. This is this is Edgeworth's wet dream of an office right here. And Edgeworth already had a pretty great office. October 22nd, prosecutor's office. Oh, my God. All the glasses over there. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office. Yes, it appears so. Wow. Cool. It's got a little model thing over there, too, on the right. It's just a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazingly deathly atmosphere. I think it's kind of dope, actually. Oh, is that... Is that him? That hooded, fig hooded figure was so still. Had noted, noticed his or her presence. Wonder who it is. Uh, what are you doing here? Ah! Oh! Yeah! What are you doing here? He's as unwelcoming as I thought he'd be. Man, you're tall. Actually, maybe even more so. Oh, I, um, I'm glad to see you're well. I am. So, who's the person over by the wall be punished for something or other? No punishment is taking place here. Oh. That's my apprentice, and he's sitting there of his own free will. I didn't know you had an apprentice. You never asked. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Okay, so, uh, interesting. Uh... It must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. Cool. New blood. He's very able in combat. Re a requisite skill for anyone under my tutelage. Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? The Reaper. 
I'd be interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming that is, such a fabled fiend genuinely inhabits our great courtrooms. Wow. Cool. Hey, check this shit out. Um, I know you see this around my arm before, but what is it exactly? It's the mark of a defense lawyer, in Japan at least. And what's your reason for showing it to a British prosecutor? Oh, well, I don't know, really. I can understand, at least. There's merit to remind yourself of who helped you become what you are today. Oh. But that's a personal matter. Something you may want to keep close at all times. Not something to flaunt. No, I suppose not. Thank you for understanding, though. Oh, I got a, I got an achievement. Inspirational roots. Interesting. Interesting comment. You think that he would know about that? Mm hmm. I think we saw in, in some indications that Ahsoki and Van Ziggs might have been acquainted with each other, right? I do wonder if um the man that he was referring to that had betrayed him, I, like, is would that be? He's like in his thirties, right? Uh, Van Zeeks. Yeah. Would that have been Asogi? No, Asogi's too young. That wouldn't, that wouldn't count. It's gotta be somebody else. Odie Asman. This guy's 47. A well-known fi financier who, uh, perished in the explosion on the experimentation stage of the Great Exhibition. It seems he was also at the head of a large criminal organization. This guy's 53 years old. Jesus. It also shows how kind, uh, Van Zeeks kind of is, though. You know? That, that was a very, that was still a very kind remark, right? I mean, it shows that he knows something. The fact that he would mention that, I'm kind of surprised Naruto wouldn't be like, how did you know that? I guess, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's already pretty common knowledge at this point that I'm not supposed to be here. And that I was, that my, uh, the person that helped me with this, like that, that this is a arm bed does not belong to me. I, I don't think so. I think that was sort of something that Strongheart sort of kept kind of hush hush. Lord Van Zeeks, about the article in this paper. Ah, uh, yes. Seems there was a reporter nearby when that little skirmish took place. When I fucking beat ass. I had no idea I'd been photographed. It was careless of me. Nice hat, man. Looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked you had run away, though. Rest assured, the police have already apprehended every last one of them. <laughs> every last one of them! But there's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. Must be that person, then. I think it's the same man who's sitting over there as we speak, isn't it? As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him? Uh, can I examine the man? Also gotta examine all the cool shit in here. I was like, God, so much stuff. Really looks like a punishment to me. Looks like he's like meditating. I've never seen someone sitting like that before. He hasn't moved a muscle since we arrived. Is he sitting on his knees? Do you think he's perhaps, perhaps he's dead? If he was dead, Bruno, he wouldn't be sitting up, would he? Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not over, over, overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead! <laughs> hmm. Uh, damn. Are those fucking bats over there? Look at all those ancient casts lying the wall there. Cask in the Reaper's chamber. Or are they caskets? You don't think all those people who escaped conviction and court are lying inside them d dead? Do you, <laughs> do you see the slow movement of Iris there? <laughs> oh my God, that was actually really funny. What ridiculous notions are going through your head, man? This is my collection of fine vintages. <laughs> man. Oh yes, of course. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> You and I were just musing to ourselves. Don't mind us, Mr. Reaper. I wouldn't. If you hadn't invited yourselves to my office to talk nonsense with my, within my earshot. <laughs> what the hell are these guys doing here? Ah! Ah, there were bats! Real bats! Yes, the Reaper's familiar as I expect. What about the mute man in the dark cloak? I thought he was the familiar. Just not the flying kind. He must be a dear friend of Mr. Reaper, then. I think the familiar idea is more likely. <laughs> Scary, though, either way. 
And they piece the fuck out. What the hell is this? I want to examine it. But it's not examinable. Check out this big picture. Wow. Is that him? That picture really, portrait really dominates the room, doesn't it? Wow. Damn. This is looking hot as fuck. <laughs> that brow of his. It's a very majestic outfit and pose. But sadly, whoever painted didn't do a very good job of capturing Lord Van Zink's facial features. What? I think it looks quite a bit like him. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's not far off, but the artist has exaggerated his subject's handsomeness, I think. Ah, that reminds me. I heard Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. How vain. That's really not an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not depict me. Surely that's immediately obvious. Oh, then who is it? His father? What? He just leaves? Fuck you! Well, clearly it's gotta be his father. Damn, we're already getting so much dank new Van Zeke's lore in this room. I love it. Oh, look, it's a skill bottle of the Great Exhibition Showground. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. I wonder why it's here. Perhaps he made to take his mind off the sadness of being too busy to attend in person? Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to queue up for a ticket. <laughs> Surely it's obvious I'm using it as an investigative team. We're just over here talking smack, and he's like right over here. You Nipponese have no business painting others as of overly reserved. Uh, I really didn't think he'd overhear that. I really do talk too loud in my blue text. And not blue text. Or Van Zeke's desk looks so stylish. And that's a marble chess set beside it. Chess? That's the Western version of our Japanese shogi game, isn't it? You know, I'm actually quite good at shogi problems. Oh, really? You probably like chess problems in that case. I'd love to challenge Lord Van Zeke sometime. To a bout of shogi problems. If you only really want to challenge yourself, you can always do that on your own at, at home. Oh my god, the glasses. Look at that fine collection of hallowed chalices and bottles neatly lined up there. My hallowed bottles are filled with the essence of the finest grapes from the finest vineyards I visit. And I personally oversee these chalices being made by the finest crystal craftsmen in the world. Just to shatter them against the wall. And yet you throw them around in corn like they were worthless. Yes. Because this imbecile is so unimaginably and repeatedly wide of the mark sometimes. Oh! Before you open your mouth next time, you should consider the poor artisans whose work you defile. <laughs> That's right. It's my fault. So it's my fault? Silly me. How could I ever thought otherwise? <laughs> this is great. This is a cool room with a lot of funny lines. Uh, I'm sure I don't miss anything. I think that's it. All right. What's up, Daddy Zeeks? Last nice attack. Lord Strongheart said that the assault last time was some sort of revenge attack. True. Carried out by the henchmen of Odie Asman's criminal organization. The investigation meant the, meant the arrests were imminent. Presumably some hoped to kill me before that happened. Odie Asman. He's always masqueraded as one of London's most powerful financiers. A global investor. But his enormous wealth came to, to him by under, underhand methods via his criminal activities. And he used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his comeuppance in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances, it was the most unusual cause of death. I, I know about that. It was super high voltage instantaneous kinesis gone wrong. Mr. Asman died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. Correct. And you think I have some kind of divine ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well... No, that does seem a little far-fetched. This man really is the fabled Reaper, and he has to be innocent of this particular death, at least. It's strange how this has worked out, isn't it, Bruno? I mean, what with you taking on the Professor's defense for the, the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Oh, yes, that's right. I barely know the man's name yet, to be honest. Albert. 
Albert Hairbrain. That's right. Do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We were at university together. Your what? Oh, interesting. I understood that Professor Hairbrain was from Germany, though. Hairbrain's from a respectable British family. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research. That's all. So you were students together. I was in the Faculty of Law, of course, and he in Science. So our paths rarely crossed. But curiously, we got along. Though I've not met him since my university days. I certainly didn't expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you of all people representing him. Ugh, only if I make it out of this office alive. He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know. Because the prosecution will be handled by me. By you? But, but you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. Conflict of interest? We are friends, it's true. Then why would you do this? If the Reaper is the prosecutor, there's nothing anyone can do to save him. He's doomed! What's Lord Van Zeke's thinking? He says nothing. Reaper's identity. What do you mean by what you said before? If you'd like to know the Reaper's true identity, does that mean... I'm a crown prosecutor and a mortal like any other. I'm no demigod. But they've all died, haven't they? The people you prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in a conviction or an acquittal. Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who, without question, deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. But that's not the true... That's not true, Mr. Natsume, for example. He wasn't a vile wretch at all. Who was Jenny? I think it's actually the same nickname name that she gave her before, I think. And that probably means that, she, that is the same. She has the same name, right? Or at least the first same first name. In fact, she's ever so working hard now. I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, it was at the hand of their own kind. It's not my work. Lord Strongheart said the same. He believes you're not involved in any way. But you are attacked by those ruffians because they, they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. Oh, it would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be feel made fearful for their lives. Do you mean to say? I mean to say that if my pseudonym serves a useful purpose, I adopt it gladly and with honor. But it's putting you in danger and you could be killed. If that is my fate, let God decide. Or Van Zeeks. Damn. Who's your dope apprentice? He's in my tutelage to become a prosecutor. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. Ah, like you are to Holmesy then, Bruno. I remember taking an apprenticeship with a great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. Looks like he's wearing some kind of mask. On Lord Strongheart's orders, nobody knows the man's face or indeed his identity. What? But why would you agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless follies. There'll be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right. Oh, they approach. Freaky. It's got like one like eye poking through there. Ah! Sort of the getting like a Phantom of the Opera look or feel from him. The task is complete. Good. In that case, you can collate all the briefs. It's 
It's not saying anything. Nice to meet you. He says nothing. Back to work again. Interesting. Masked man, huh? That was really strange, though. I've never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed. And yet, somehow it didn't feel like our first encounter. Really? Really? Uh, huh. That's weird. I'm trying to think of who that would potentially be that we've met up to this point. Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside this office. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. Really? Oh, I see. Lord Strongheart has brought him in, has forbidden it, and asked him to wear a mask, huh? Does he not want me or, I guess, anybody recognizing him for reasons? Why would that be the case? Why are you so interested in my apprentice anyway? Oh, no. I mean, sorry. I didn't mean to... The way he stood there so casually, yet yeah, with that flawless posture... Couldn't be. Ah, uh, yes. This is the guy I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, what's that? That Nipponese man. Is he faring well? Sorry? The one arrested twice in succession six months ago. With the stoop and the mustache and the jitters. Ah, uh, Mr. Nasume, you mean? Sure, he'd be very pleased to find out you identified him from that list, Runo. <laughs> He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Postal the other day. I see. Well, I think we can end our discussion there, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you to spend it investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice and for the conversation. I can't believe he's asking after Saseki-san, after a Nipponese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. We're also make sure he's not fucking dead after the curse, right? I never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with a mad scientist, did you? That's a turn off for the books. A mad scientist? I uh, mean Professor Hairbrain. <laughs> Wait, what do you think he's a mad scientist? Because he's got a name like that? And also that he killed somebody, potentially? Yes, it might be worth quizzing the professor about his relationship with Lore Van Zeeks, I think. Cool. Wow. All right, guys. Well, we're pretty far into this already. I've heard uh, from some people say that the apparently this investigation is quite long. So I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. But I hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as I did. Dude, with all this sick fan Zeke's lore, and we got a new character over there. A mysterious character with a mask on. Ooh. I'm going to have to think back, yeah, to previous uh, the previous game, previous cases about, like, who could fulfill that role, right? Who could be a uh, person that would be the man behind the mask? If it's someone I, I, I feel I've met them before, it's gotta be somebody, right? But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe to our rave gum piggy penguin. A boy this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.